Hello, everybody. This is Niao Niao, and surprise, surprise, there is a brand new live stream here today for you. It's so excited to get out of the studio and going out here in the world. Though I'm not, you know, leaving Beijing for anything, but I am taking you to a very interesting, exciting, brand new series of our live stream. That is enjoying the Winter Olympics with Niao Niao myself. If you are a, let's say, regular customer, you would know. To find us on CR, I learn Chinese Facebook page, YouTube channel, and English Huanqiu Guangbo Weibo. But don't worry if this is your first time watching this live stream, because in our live streams we introduce you to the interesting things happening in China. We try to include some language points, allow you to take some language away, and in the meanwhile, having an idea about the society, the culture of China here today, and. Specifically for this occasion, I am actually taking you into a civic activity center here in a special community district. By saying it is special, I am actually taking you to meet a interesting exhibition allowing science to play an interesting part of Winter Olympics. But it's not that special per se because this exhibition actually go around the country, or it's set to go around the country to allow people having an idea about the. Upcoming Winter Olympics in 2022. As usual, if you like the live stream, please like and share and comment as much as possible. Let us know what are your questions, and I will be answering. I will be answering them as soon as I see them. And of course, for this special series, I'm taking you to meet all the different items, the let's say surrounding culture about the Winter Olympics. And I have to admit, for I myself, I am not a huge sport. Girl, I don't play specifically winter sports so much, which makes this exhibition a perfect chance for us to get start knowing Winter Olympics, especially the sports, the discipline, as well as the events. If you have watched our previous show, you would know the distinction among these three. Basically, a sport is what we call in Chinese 大项大项 So for the seven major sports, you would have. Um, for example,、uh, let's say skiing would be considered a 大项 and ice skating would be considered a 大项 So for the major ones, the ones with an association regulating everything within this area, they would be considered a sport. And within the sport, we would have discipline. Discipline are much more carefully defined. For example, for this year, in well, actually next year, for this Olympic in Beijing, we would have 15 different discipline. 15 different in Chinese, we would say 分项分项 different discipline. And there will be 109小项 So each event 小项 event actually would generate one. Gold medal. So each event generate a gold medal. So in this、um, 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing, we are going to witness the emerging of 109 gold medaler. And for this exhibition specifically, I'm going to take you to be with me and start getting an idea about all these different interesting sports, how it's played, why do we love them, and how difficult it is. Yes, I'm going to say difficult because I had a little sneak peek already. How challenging and difficult it is to play these games if we want to play them ourselves. And as you can see, the theme of the exhibition is 人兵逐梦 basically. Um, combining the passion, the fire, and the let's say enthusiasm with the purity of the ice and the、um, let's say amazing experience we are about to have in this upcoming winter. And of course, all these exhibition need people to tend to design. And today I have a special guest here with me, and let's welcome our special guest. 黄老师，你好！你好，你好，你好，非常欢迎您，谢谢您今天来参加我们的节目。Thank you very much for being with us today. So, would you please do a little bit of 
啊、um, introduction for us， 可以自我介绍一下吗？可以啊，我叫黄健，是来自中国科学技术馆的一名科技教师啊。Kuji Jiao Shi. So we have actually a teacher specific,、uh, specifying in science from the China Science and Technology Museum.、Mm. And I heard that for these kind of exhibitions, they don't just stay in one place. They actually go around the country, allowing people to appreciate and enjoy all around. And I want to know how it works. So we this exhibition is a circular exhibition. Yes, exactly. It will go around the country and go to different locations, go to different locations. 然后下到地方去，让更多的青少年吧去感受冰雪运动。啊，主要是给青少年什么最体验互动比较多。对，是的，是的，是的。嗯、<笑> okay, so this exhibition actually is also designated for teenagers, so that they would have a more interactive experience with the Winter Olympics, because we know that here in China we don't really have a super long history of winter sports, and it is possible that for some adolescents right here they didn't. Let's say treat snowboarding or treat、uh, ice skating a sport as、mm, familiar as, for example, basketball or running or swimming, and this would be a better would be a great chance for them to get an idea about winter sports. So today, Mr. Huang is going to be with us the entire time. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment area because even if I may not be able to answer you, Mr. Huang here must have the answer. So let's go inside and see what's in the exhibition. 谢谢，谢谢。All right. So、uh, when we're doing that, let me take a look at our comment area and see whether or not you guys have <laughs> any questions. Because as you know, we live stream in multiple platforms, and、uh, we have here I Learn Chinese Facebook page, YouTube channel, as well as Yingyu Huanqiu Guangbo Weibo. That is why during the starting part. For our friends on YouTube, you might find that we've been live streaming for a while, and you were watching a still picture. But do not worry about it; it will be a long live stream, and you will be able to enjoy it. So allow me to check your comment. All right, let's take a look.、Uh, for our friends on Facebook, if you are watching, make sure you are leaving a comment and say hi to me, and let me know which one is your favorite winter game or your favorite winter sport. 告诉我。你们最喜欢的冬季运动是哪一项啊 ？I'm already saying hello to Musa, to I am Ara, saying wow, happy to have you here. And we also have Divna saying morning from Bulgaria. Oh, happy to have you. Is that the kind of? Well, are you familiar with winter sports? Let me know, all of you guys. Jason, you're here. Happy to have you, Jason. And Jason is a、uh, friend of our site. And it has been over a year. So in Chinese, we have Man Zhou Nian Fen. Very happy to have you. And MD is here saying, saying thanks. Thank you for joining the live stream today. I'm going to take you to meet to all these different sports in the form of science. Let's say.、Um, Simulation. So, for example, the one in front of me I'm looking at right now is going to allow me to have an idea about skiing. Skiing. As you can see on the picture, skiing, or let's say all the winter games, bury these kind of characters:、um, speed, 速度速度 speed. It has to be really fast, and you actually can be really fast with the help of the equipment. And of course. Based on the spirit of the Olympics, we want to be faster. And as for skiing, for example, when you are on a ski board and when you try to start skiing, there will be certain characters you want to or certain goals you want to hit. And this one is stimulating that kind of experience, allowing you to have an idea of how.、Um, I'm not going to say hard, but challenging it is for you to try this specific kind of game. For example, this one in Chinese is called 雪道飞驰 allow you to mimic the. Okay, so let me explain first. What I'm supposed to do is hit all the poles. So they represents the 奇门 in Chinese, and the poles you're supposed to、uh, touch them and have them go. Down onto the ground, and in order to do that, I have to shift really fast to touch them. Not really sure if I'm doing it right, but I'm telling you, it's already very challenging, and I only got ten scores. 
Okay, so you can totally imagine a teenager having a lot of fun with it. I'm going to do it again, by the way. They're cheering, but I don't think they're cheering for much. Okay, so in order to get started, you slide to the left side, and that would allow you to enter the junior site. And if you slide to the right side, it will allow you to enter the, I would say, senior level of the game. And the idea is you use your whole body to control the board, which is a little, I don't think it's quite similar for the skiing per se, but it allows you to have an idea of how much strength you have to utilize with your body, with your entire core muscle and your legs and arms to um, have the kind of maneuver that is required for this specific game. So skiing. Let's try it again. Let's see if I can hit a higher or better. Okay, so this. I'm getting a little bit better, but it's hard. Wait a minute, I'm not getting better. I can't. I just simply cannot hit the right target. Okay, I found a way to do it, that is to stay in one side of the track and don't go to the other side. Gosh, it's much harder than it looks because it's much heavier than it appears. And if you're doing any kind of skiing, you need to allow yourself to touch or to hit the pole. and. Uh, Let's see if I, yes, I do have a little bit of information about skiing right here. For example, for freestyle skiing or ski cross, what you have to do is a little bit like running. It's a little bit like competing with others. There will mostly um, be two athletes competing with each other. They're going to be ski from the top of the mountain and all the way down and can be really fast can sometimes be a little bit dangerous, but they're athletes, they're the faster, higher, stronger ones. So it's a kind of uh, sports, like I said, compared to summer games. We often say that for Olympics, we want to push our limits, but for winter games, not only are we pushing our limits to our personal extremes, but we're in the meantime also pushing the limits for the condition, or let's say about the condition in the nature. So yes, something very interesting uh, to note. And since we are talking about um, let's say winter games or snow related winter games, allow me to give you the five, um, actually ten, ten discipline that is related to snow in the Olympics. We have alpine skiing, that's Gao Shen Hua Xue, alpine skiing. We have the biathlon Dong Ji Liang Xiang. We're going to take a look at it a little bit later, don't worry about it. We also have bobsleigh, bobsleigh would be xue qiao, uh, xue che, xue che bobsleigh. We also have cross country skiing. Cross country skiing in Chinese actually is called it means you can travel, let's say, uh, overcome certain barriers. That is the essence of the word in the Chinese language. And we also have freestyle skiing, which I feel like I was doing on that specific machine. And there's also uh, Nordic Combined. Nordic Combined is about to be seen a bit later. Don't worry about it. And ski jumping. Ski jumping is ski jumping. Uh, also, snow, uh, snowboarding. Snowboarding is with one board. So in Chinese, we call it danbanhuaxue. And of course, there is also lodge and skeleton. That will be xueqiao and xuechu. So these 10 are the 10 out of the 15 discipline as the 10 different kind of uh, fenxiang in Chinese that is related to snow. And right here I am standing in front of something very interesting. If you have um, watched one of our previous videos, you might have seen, ooh, you might have seen this specific item. It is called a binghu, binghu curling, curling. And it is really heavy. It's around 20 kilo, 20 kg, right among the um, let's say the weight that you can carry with you on a plane.
bing hu. It's really heavy. And what you have to do is to push this curl into this uh, round target, into the target. We're going to have a look at it a bit later. And while you are doing that, pushing the curl into the target, actually you, our teammate, is using a brush, cleaning the pathway for you, trying to change the direction as well as the speed of the track. So this right here allows you to have a look. <coughs> so right here, I'm standing in front of a tiny, tiny version of the curling space area. Uh, curling in Chinese is actually bing hu, bing hu, and we have the information here talking about curling, bing hu. It also has the name of chess on ice, because not only are you pushing all these, oh, this one's so cute, That's, it's much smaller. It, the, uh, the correct sizes should be over there, the ones that I can barely hold with my one hand, and these ones are smaller ones. What you are supposed to do is to push this curl into the target, into the right area, and hit the target, and land it in areas like these. So, each team would have four, we call them stone. Each team would have four stones, and there are four athletes. Each athlete gets to play the stone twice. So actually, each team have, uh, has eight chances. And what you, what you actually do is to, um, let's say, push the stone out and have your teammates clean the pathway for you with a brush. And what you want to do is hit the target. Hit the target right in the circle. So let's see if I can play this mini version of curling right here. That is not a good start. All right, that is a... F Let me try this one. Too much. Let's try another one. Okay, that's not bad. And the fun thing about curling is that you can actually hit... Yes, hit uh, the existing stone on the area with another stone and that is why it is also considered chess on ice because you get to play with a lot of different strategies and have um, if I'm not remembering it wrong you can have different time to think about your strategy and talk to your teammates and you guys can plan to have a, to can have a plan and start playing Let's see if I can do this. Oh, you can also hit it out or in. So with this specific uh, game or this machine, you can try enjoying it with your friends. And let's see if I have a result. Here I am with this result. We can take a look. One other thing very interesting about curling is that, for example, in any other game, you would have the score as 4 to 5, for example. But 4 to 5 would balance each other in curling and have it show to audience, to the viewers, as 0 to 1. So 4 to 5 would be equal to 0 to 1. They balance themselves out. And here we can see that if you guys read Chinese, uh, in this exhibition, they also allow you to have a more specific idea about the rules, about the, let's say, roles different people play or different athletes play, as well as the brushing function and how it's scored. So very interesting and vivid exhibition. In the meanwhile, let's see if you guys have any questions uh, in the comment area. I would love to answer your questions. We have EE -E saying thanks for all the one minute lessons. Very helpful to me. Thank you. Thank you so much for leaving that comment. I assume you're talking about the character as well as words instructions. 
um, yes, this is your I Learn Chinese Facebook page. So we do a lot of Chinese language sharing as well as culture sharing. I am very glad you like them. Um, for example, if you guys know any of the words or want to know any of the words here on the board, let me know in the comment area. I will try to answer them as well. And Jason, hello, happy to have you here.、Um, Let's see if we have any other comments from our, our other sites, since we do live stream on multiple platforms. Platforms, as always, personal account that'll be even more appreciated. And I know that recently Facebook has changed its company name to Meta. I think it has something to do with creating. A world with the help of science, with the future element, and apparently here in the Winter Olympics exhibition, right in this community, it is exactly what our、um, exhibitors and creators are trying to do. That is to putting a little element of science in the game, so that you would be better, you would find it easier to enjoy the games. And yes, we are also receiving a lot of other information here. Other comments with Glenn saying, "Have you learned to ski yet? Not really, but I am thinking about learning it on camera, so you guys would have the chance to, you know, mock me and laugh at me because I am really not a sporty, sporty kind of girl." But thank you for that question. And also, we have friends Pasta saying hi. Happy to have you here. What a shame! I do not understand your beautiful language. I'm pretty sure <laughs> it is with us, please. And also, we have Glenn saying, "Remember, if you see a tree in your path, turn to avoid it, or turn your skis front forward each other to stop." Thank you, thank you very much for that advice. I will certainly try to do that because I agree with you. It can be deadly dangerous. Like we said, speed, 速度 is a very important element in winter games, as well as 技巧技巧 would be skills. It requires a lot of different kind of skills, and since you are moving and you are sporting on ice or snow, the danger becomes larger and more serious. But one fun thing about it is that when you are actually playing on ice, you get to be faster, and there will be more. Accidents, which can be more fun. For example, since you can play, let's say, ball, football, basketball, any kind of ball on ground, on solid ground, certainly you can do it on ice as well. And that gives us ice hockey. So ice hockey is the kind of sport you might be able to play on ice. Sadly, for some reason, I don't think I am the perfect model to show you this specific sport. So, how about we invite Mr. Huang here and show us how to play this game? Can you help us, Mr. Huang? So, what is this game? We will look at this game first, and then we will look at the board. Then, 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 we will look at the board. Teenager, so he is squatting a little bit, not as high, and he's trying to play this game. So how do we how do we do it? Okay, okay. So I I'll leave the site. Okay. So what you do is to hold your arms around your body and play the goalkeeper, 守门员 goalkeeper. Ooh. Okay, so we can see. <laughs> so that's the idea. You move among the three sections, trying to be the goalkeeper. And as the goalkeeper, you can actually touch the goal or try, oh, touch the ball or try to block the ball from getting into the gate. And that is what this game is about. Actually, 谢谢谢谢黄老师 thank you, thank you very much. Actually, this is quite a brutal game and quite a "Quote unquote violent game because in the beginning of、uh, the creation, upon the creation of the game, there would there would be a designated. I'm not going to use the word fighter, but in Chinese we call them 执行人执行人 This person is in charge of fighting without their helmet, without all the protection, all the gears. They'll fight the equivalent from the other team, and that makes the game especially. 
let's say、um, combating with the element of combat, 对抗性很强的一个运动 It is a very specific kind of game. 冰球，冰球 For this year, something really cool is that the NHL athletes are set to join this. Specific、um, 2022 Winter Olympics here in Beijing. So, last for the last Winter Games for those of you who are huge fan of ice hockey and didn't get to see the professional athletes for this Winter Olympic Games, you guys will be able to see them. So, do not miss the game for sure.、Um, for Ice hockey. Actually, we say hockey players can only hit the ball with the flat side of their stick. I don't think we see the stick, but yes, on the screen you get to see the stick. And hockey players are not allowed to use their feet or any other parts of the body to control the ball at all time, except for the goalkeeper. So yes, if you want to come here, if you are actually living in Beijing and you want to. Take a look at all these different games, different equipment. I would strongly suggest you to come and enjoy the exhibition. Really much fun. Ooh, 冬季两项 by Athlon. This is also an interesting one. I think I've already read all the names of the sports related to snow in the Winter Olympics, and this one is a combination. It's actually a combination of.、Um, Cross-country skiing and shooting. So this is also generated from military maneuvers. Since in, in well, maybe not ancient times, in old times, for those country that are mostly covered with snow, it is not exactly a sport for them. Rather than a way to get around, rather than a transportation, and they need to snow or to ski here and there. As a way to go around and、um, fight against their enemy, and for by Athlon, it is generated from that tradition. That is, you ski to loop,、uh, to loop, and you use your gun to actually shoot. I'm really bad at this, so before doing that, allow me to have a shout out to you guys and let me know what kind of questions do you have in the common area. Putting them there, that'll do. Vivian saying, "What is your accent on Wei? Well, what what is your account on Weibo? Our account would be English 环球广播 So English would be English. 环球 is globally. 广播 would be." Broadcast. So English 环球广播 I think I can put it down here. English 环球广播 Yes, that is our Weibo account. And like I share the Chinese language with you on Facebook, on YouTube. Actually, we also share the language of English on Weibo, on English 环球广播 Weibo. So vice versa, the connection and interaction between different cultures and languages. Um, Vivian saying, "Thank you. I will check later after this live stream. You are very welcome. Thank you so much. And 你好，你好，牛牛 Happy to have you here. Sorry again. Do not know how to pronounce your name in your beautiful language, but very happy to have your company in today's live stream. Glenn saying, 'Will you try a ski jump?' I will most definitely do not try a ski jump. That sounds so dangerous. I can promise you to try skiing, but." No jumping, no, 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 no jumping for me. That's too skillful. Like I said, 速度 speed and 技巧 skills are the two.、Um, I think two of the most important elements in winter sports. And I might be able to try them both, but not to the level that I can show you in competition or in any kind of live videos. So, no, no, no. That's a no. Not for now. Maybe if four years later、uh, we get to cover another Winter Olympics, I can show you then. Give me some time to practice. Like we always say, practice makes perfect.、Uh, Mike saying hello from Philippines. Keep safe. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. I think it is vital. Actually, for winter sports, it is vital to keep yourself safe,、um, warm, and. Let's say connected and、um, available for others, so that they know where you are, and that is something very interesting and very, I would say, especially from the. 
perspective of, of a scientist very interesting to do research in. That is also an area we're going to touch. I will try to show you guys how to wear the best kind of costume and the best kind of equipment you're going to need because they would not only keep you warm, they will also allow you to do exercise, so something very interesting. I feel like I'm stalling because I do not want to do this exercise. Uh, Glenn is also saying, make sure you dodge a tree. Thank you. Oh, Yu Xuan telling me Yu Xuan, that is your name. Thank you so much for giving me that information. And um, yes, what you're watching is a live stream with CRI Learn Chinese Facebook page, YouTube channel, and Yingyu Huanjiu Guangbo Weibo. We are trying really hard, showing you all the. But I do not know how to land. My landing is not going to be a soft landing at all. And we have Sensar saying, um, "Really great to watch. Thank you very much." And Giovanni, you're here saying you're. My mom played ice hockey when she was young in Holland, and she was, oh, she was the goalie. She was the goalkeeper. That's pretty cool. I think your mom would do a great job giving lectures to kids who would like to enjoy the Winter Olympic Games. And with no further ado, allow me to present the biathlon, Dong Ji Liang Xiang. In Chinese, we call it Dong Ji Liang Xiang because it's the combination of two specific items of sports. One is the cross-country skiing, cross-country skiing, and the other one would be shooting, shooting. Imagine yourself a, um, let's say, soldier in, for example, North North Europe, in country like that, it's really cold. It's covered with ice. You have to get around. You have to go cover really long distance. In the in the meantime, you also have to fight the enemy, or you have to go hunting, and that requires both technique. That is why here in on this machine, we can actually try Dong Ji Liang Xiang by Athlon. That is to ski, and then to shoot. Okay, so let's see if I can give it a go. What I have to do is to push them. Whoa, this is heavy. Okay. I'm pretty sure this is not the right uh, posture because for Dong Ji Liang Xiang, oh, for um, cross country skiing, what I do is my, my shoes would be tied to the board, to the two boards and I would be walking or gliding a little bit on ice and it's not it cannot really be this hard I'm using my whole body strength to push it wow I can hardly talk when I'm doing this like I said it's the kind of sports that you need to utilize the strength from your entire body, not only your arms, but also your core muscle. And since I'm talking, I cannot catch my breath. And I'm moving so slow in the screen. Oh, okay, so this is the skiing part. And now I am to the shooting part. I'm not a good shooter, so I'll be really slow. Uh, slow. Oh, 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 really slow. Okay. No. Uh, if you didn't even hit the target, oof, for some reason, I cannot find my target. Okay, finding the target, but not hitting it. This game suggests that you should be skiing really fast, so the time of the first and second loop would be added together as your score. And the accuracy of the hitting of the target would be transferred. This is very strange. I have never done a live stream like this before. But it will be transformed as time. And if you miss the target, you would face the punishment of adding extra time I cannot do this, of adding extra time in your final score or to do the loop one more time. So in Chinese, we would say fa shi or fa chuan. Okay, see, the essence of 
Olympic is to push to your limit, and I think this is my limit. I'll still finish it. If I am an athlete, I would have to be. <laughs> I would have to be uh, the kind of story you would tell in a game. That is someone who tried really hard, but cannot do it, but finishes at last anyway, because finishing is quite important in this case. But I am not doing it right because oh, I'm not going to lie to you. Someone helped me. It's just impossible in this case to finish it all by myself. But yes, as you can see, uh, there, will, there will be two sets of, um, let's say, score at the end. And the reason that is really hard and also the... Um, shooting part can be really hard is because while you were skiing, the cross-country skiing require you to, requires you to do this very intensive kind of sports so that your cardio function would be highly stimulated, your heartbeat would be super fast, and that would actually temper with your ability to correctly and perfectly hit the target. So that is the idea. Dong as you can see, Dong by Athlon. Like I said, if you're interested in the game, come do it yourself and you would find it a good exercise and also really, really tiring. Let's see if we have some comments about my performance there. A glancing machine stimulators are harder than actually doing it. Thank you. Thank you very much for saying that. That makes me feel better. Uh, Dragon Boat Festival practice is now paying off. I know, I don't, I don't get it. When I'm doing the live streams out there, I all often attend certain kind of sports. We've tried dragon boat racing, we've tried other kind of boats, and now this. I can tell you if you stick with CRI Learn Chinese Facebook page, YouTube channel, and Yingyu Huan Jiu Guang Wo Weibo, you would be able to see myself, make a fool of myself, all over the country with different sports games. And for you guys, I'll do it. Uh, and uh, we have <laughs> we have to let say move your feet. Yes, actually, if you are doing biathlon correctly, you are supposed to be moving your feet. You can walk. Well, I would understand it as walk on the ice or glide on the ice. That's two different kind of move, but precisely, you get to move your feet. It's just on the stimulator, we don't do it that way. We where I um, mostly exercise my arms and core muscles. And also, ooh, our friend from YouTube saying, I was kidding, um, I was not making fun of you. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, thank you guys so much for all this lovely information. Let's continue walking here in this fun exhibition hall, even though it's not that, I would say, huge space-wise, it is actually a place allowing you to have a really specific understanding and have your hands-on experience about these games. Since we've already covered the um, speed part as well as the skills part, so two very lady, she is so elegant. You want to have spins on ice. There is a very interesting concept we call conservation of angular momentum. So take a look at this little figure man. One, he's spinning. This is the speed. And if the man would put his arms not against his body, but lower, he would be able to spin faster. You guys can see the difference, right? So if you hold your arms horizontally, that will be this kind of speed, but this requires you, will actually allows you to be faster. So it's basically the kind of phenomenon you see. For example, in ski jumping, if you want to jump, if you want to be faster, firstly, perhaps you are holding your arms um, 
beside your body, and they are in a horizontal position. But when you're actually jumping, you want to be faster. You want to spin faster. You would put your arms like this, right? So that is another tiny little scientific point we get to see here. And the reason we're mentioning it is because this exhibition is designated for teenagers as well as adolescents. For them, understanding what it looks like, how to do it, is important for sure. But if this would allow them to understand the science behind it, it will be even better. So yes, figure skating. Uh, let's continue to move. In the meanwhile, um, there are more information about figure skating. For example, it has developed from a practical way to get around on ice into elegant mix of art and sport today. There are different jumps and skis, uh, spins, and the jumps and spins can be, let's say, hard to detect. The differences between these specific movements can be hard to detect but they can certainly be detected by, with the help of certain technology. And right now we are looking at the helmets, for safety. We have um, officially moved from different stimulator machines of different sports to the costume and equipment. And allow me to present this really beautiful figure skating costume. And right up there, you can see the Chinese character Mei. Beautiful. Mei. That is one character for the designers of um, these different costumes. And of course, they also have to be nuan, very warm. I think I owe something l like this. It has to be able to endure really low temperature, and it also has to carry a certain level of, let's say, ability to resist the heat from outside. So, hu bao hu protect. And I was told that for these different items, for these different costumes, they also have different fabric specifically designed and, uh, let's say, developed for them. And I think Mr. Huang has more information, so let's welcome him. So, Huang, you have two different materials, right? Yes, it's our behind-the-scenes materials. Actually, this is what we said about the high school high school. It has a certain protection function, and it has a certain protection function. Ah, I'll move it down. Okay, so for this one, this is actually for the alpine skiing. Because alpine skiing, even though Nowadays, it's not on, uh, often in the Mount Elf. It is still skiing from really top of the mountain all the way down. So it is technically in Chinese we call it 冰天雪地的世界. So it's really cold and it's snow everywhere. And it is also the kind of sport that is the perfect combination of speed and skill. So you have to be really fast, and it is possible that you will hit something. And this is the fabric that. Athletes playing alpine skiing would be wearing. It is, I think, it is kind of, um, let's say, it carries uh, the specific kind of fabric inside, so it will keep you warm. And in the meantime, it is a little bit thinner than just every fabric, so it will ease you when you hit something. So the vi um, the hit would be, let's say buffed by the specific fabric. It just t it touches. I think I'm, when I'm touching it, it's really strange. So I think this one is from here with the next very thank you with the other very important character that's quite so fast and this fabric I'm holding right here is also very flexible you can stretch it and uh, the fabrication is also low so and it's much lighter I feel like compared to this one so this fabric is used for um, the speed track well the speed skating short track speed skating so these are the items thank you thank you very much for 
showing us these two uh, kinds of fabric. And on top of the costume, something very important, we are also looking at their shoes. 不同的鞋, that will be the alpine skiing shoe. And this one is Hua Jing. Also vital, the glasses, because one, you are looking at white all the time. It's too bright, it's really white. It will cause something in Chinese we call it Xu Mang Zheng. It will you will find yourself difficult to focus on actual item and difficult to distinct on different stuff and even people. And you would be temporarily blind if you're not wearing these specific kind of glasses. So they carry the function of protecting you against the cold temperature, protecting you against the wind with little flakes in it, and also it will allow you to see the world instead of perfect white, but in the shade color, sometimes I would say um, yellow or sometimes purple, so you would not be blinded by the snow. So these are all very important and interesting items and equipment. I would say, um, I was told that, for example, for people living in the Western country or in the countries that are abundant with snow volume, they would find snowing a kind of lifestyle that is a little bit luxurious because they need to buy all the item. You need to buy your shoes, you need to buy your gear, costume, glasses, glove, everything. And of course, you need to buy your snow boards, all the different blades. But that is not the case here in China. That kind of luxurious lifestyle, that kind of cost, is not necessary here in China because for us, we do renting a lot. We would go visit a resort, allowing you to snow a certain kind of snow mountain, and they would allow you to rent all these different gears, all the different equipment from the shop owner so that you can rent the stuff, have two or three days of fun skiing holiday and go back home returning everything. The cost is much, much lower, which is why um, with the stimulation, with the, let's say, momentum of the Winter Olympic Games, we've also pledged that we would allow around 300 million people in China having the opportunity to enjoy Winter Games. In Chinese, we call it So we would allow these 300, at least 300 million people get onto the snow, onto the ice, enjoying the beauty of a winter day outdoor activity and be able to have fun in this beautiful season. And that is all the equipment we're looking at. Let's continue to walk. Of course, we've already talked about China being a country with this ambition of allowing its people to enjoy the beautiful winter days. But when it comes to snow, um, let's say snowboarding or skiing or skating, it requires a certain element, very important one, that is snow or ice. And for those mountains that are just tiny little bit not ready, not having the enough volume of snow, what we can do is give it a little nudge, give it a little help by what we call snow making. And this is a um, stimulator machine telling you what are the specific most important element to make snow. And here we have this one. That's the getting started. And we can actually control these two elements. That is the humidity level as well as the temperature. So two very important elements. Of course, for snow, what you want to do is you want the temperature to be really, really low and you want enough, ah, you want enough water in the air. And now that's how we generate snowflakes and you push start. That's when the snow making machine started to make snow. So in Chinese we call it 人工降雪, little nudge, a little help for the mountains that are just the itsy bitsy lack of the snow they need. And of course this little car, let's do it again so that you guys have a better understanding. That little car is also very interesting. The car is for, yes, 
The car is to push the snow into a certain Oh, okay, so now it's trying to tell me how to play with it. Um, it will give the snow a little bit of pressure, so it's not totally loose. It has a certain strength. Okay, so we want it to be very humid, and we're generating snowflake. Perfect. And you push start. Zhaoxue, manufacture snow, snow making. You will have a certain amount of snow on the ground. You drive your car, that is called a ya xue chu, you want to put a little bit of pressure on it, drive away the spare snow and also give it a solid ground and that is how you get a hua xue chang, a field that allow you to snow. Okay, let's continue to walk and I'll show you how come it is very important to have the exact amount of snow, the exact amount of uh, let's say pressure for the snow because on top of what we call shuangban snow skiing, snowboarding is another very popular sport here in China. It is a very important item here in um, let's say a very important sport in the Winter Olympics and also something that you can choose as pleasure. And in Chinese we call it danban, danban. So dan is single and ban would be suggesting the board. So danban, danban is single snowboarding, snowboarding, danban. And let's look at the ban precisely. Right here we can see that I get to see there are already two snowboards waiting here. Before looking at that, tell me if you can see the distinction between these two boards. Okay, so when I'm on this board, it moves like this. Try the other board. This one is actually less flexible. So remember the snow we just made? We made um, the snow with a certain volume. And for snowboarding, the idea is that when you're gliding on snow, you would give a little bit of pressure to the snow that you are on. And the snow, with the air inside, with its being not perfectly like the ice, very dense, it actually gives you a strength pushing up, and that pushing up strength is what we call Li. That is the kind of strength that you want to utilize when you're on such boards. So the one I tried first is not as flexible. So, well, actually the one I tried first is more flexible than the one that I am on right now, allowing you to have more maneuver, but more, maybe a little less resilience, and that shows you that actually the making and the choosing of different snowboard is also very important. Here we have a vivid picture telling you the structure of different snowboard. You would have the essence, you would have um, different layers, and yes, you can also decorate your snowboard perfectly because snowboarding is exactly the kind of activity, the kind of sport that is very, with the element of social, you can um, play the snowboard on a mountain a lot and then you would get tired, you meet new friends, you compare notes on your skiing skills and then you start being friends and that's how young people, young kids nowadays are enjoying their winter times here in China already. All right, let's have a final shout out to you guys because I think we've had the kind of live stream that is information packed. For one, I myself find it really interesting and a little bit hard to digest, it's so do not worry about looking and watching the playback. Make sure you watch the playback if you have any other questions. And we also have a hydrated X of a moon saying, wow, this live stream is cool. Thank you. It is cool. And it's a bit cold, I have to say, even though it's indoor. But for exhibition halls, I am wearing a little light. It's Winter is really here in Beijing, and I cannot wait to watch the game on site to show you more fun activities happening here concerning winter sports. Vivian saying, hey, 加油, 牛, 牛. yes, you were right when I was on that machine, that biathlon 
stimulating machine. Yes, the character on the screen says 加油加油 so cheer on, work harder, go for it. That's 加油 in Chinese or add oil if you may. Glenn saying tip use both hands and won't breathe. Gently squeeze the trigger. Use the end finger only. Thank you guys so much for giving me all the tips and advices. But I have to tell you, when I was on that thing, I cannot think of anything just to push really hard. And when I don't have the strength, it's even harder. But thank you so much for the uh, all for the lovely messages. And also, you're saying take a bre- take a breath. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we've got all these lovely messages. We also have friends saying, "Love the live stream, thank you." And、uh, I'm really glad that you are enjoying it. Like I said, this would be at least a three months long. You get to enjoy Winter Olympics with me, Niu Niu, here in Beijing, or perhaps. Most likely, other places around the country, because of the enthusiasm we bear to the upcoming Winter Olympic Games and the beautiful winter that is about to come, we have more and more people not only appreciating Winter Games in the form of watching TV, sitting on a couch, and just. Simply witnessing the generating of the gold medals, but more and more people decided to go onto the snow and onto the ice and started practicing themselves, having a little more winter fun for themselves, and that is the essence of. Olympics. That is the essence of sports. And thank you guys so much for being with us the entire hour. And th- special thanks to our guest, Mr. Huang, for joining us in today's live stream. And thank you very much. And hopefully we will see you for our next live stream. Thank you guys. Bye bye.